recognition and academic performance. All right. Hi, uh, I'm Jens Horvik. I'm a double major in business and psychology at Barnes College. And uh, for my senior thesis project, I chose to look at motivation and academic performance. Uh, so first, a little introduction. Um, so I've been uh, around sports my whole life, involved with soccer. And having been put in different leadership roles uh, in my recent years, uh, I found the topic of motivation very, very interesting. Motivation can be defined as the driving force behind all action. And um, traditionally, it has been thought of varying solely in amount, but more modern research suggests that uh, considering the quality of the motivation can also be uh, important. Now, there's three main categories of motivation, there's extrinsic, intrinsic, and A motivation. Uh, extrinsic motivation refers to that you're uh, motivated by external factors. Uh, intrinsic is internal factors, and A motivation is uh, absence of motivation. Um, so you can't really talk about motivation without mentioning, mentioning doctors Edward DC and uh, Richard Ryan, who are major researchers within the, top, uh, the field of motivation. Uh, they're the researchers behind the self-determination theory, which, um, which defines extrinsic and intrinsic motivation, as well as it uh, proposes how focus on uh, how social and cultural factors facilitate and undermine people's sense of will and initiative. Uh, in addition to their well-being and their quality of their performance. Um, so this is a study uh, that was uh, about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation within the, the uh, workplace. Uh, I found it interesting uh, because they hypothesized that, and the results as well show that uh, employees uh, promised monetary compensation for working overtime um, was uh, likely to perform solely the amount of work required to achieve that monetary compensation and not a single uh, second more. Um, and that was one of my inspirations behind this study. And I wanted to see if I could, uh, if uh, how the, um, the results would pan out in an academic setting. Uh, next is uh, uh, Valran and his colleagues are also major researchers for within the topic of motivation. And among other things, they uh, come up with the um, the scale and the survey that I used for, for this uh, study. Uh, so my predicted correlations, the first one was based off of the, the other research that I mentioned in the workplace that there would be a negative correlation be between extrinsic motivation and GPA. Uh, and this is why, this is because um, based on the previous research that, um, that when motivation is extrinsic then people are uh, their people's attentions are focused on the end uh, and rather than the behavior itself. I also predicted a positive correlation between intrinsic motivation and uh, GPA and a negative correlation between A motivation and GPA. Uh, so our participants, so um, this research was done at Barton College. I got 124 uh, students responded to this. Uh, the students, participants were recruited through email, word of mouth and a flyer. Um, and ages was a pretty wide age range from 18 to 50, uh, what the uh, average age was about 21 years old. Um, average GPA was around 3.31. And as you can see, the gender split, there was majority female, but it's representative of the student population at Barton College, which is majority uh, female. Uh, so the measures, so first uh, the participants were asked to fill out a demographic survey where they were asked basic demographic questions like age, uh, nationality, class rank, um, as well as GPA, which uh, was used as a measure for academic performance. Uh, they were also asked other uh, demographic questions based on their activities, so whether they were involved in Greek life or not, whether they were athletes or not, uh, and other, other things like that. Uh, then they were uh, expected to proceed to the Ac uh, academic motivation scale. Uh, the academic motivation scale is a survey consisting of only one question. It asks, why do you go to college? And it has 28 corresponding statements, which the participants are to rate on a seven-point Likert scale uh, to what degree they agree or disagree with that statement. Uh, so here are some sample questions from the academic motivation scale. So for extrinsic motivation, they were asked, why do you go to college? And, and the answer would be, in order to get a more prestigious job later on. So that's the external factor. Uh, for intrinsic motivation, the answer could be, I go to college because I experience pleasure and satisfaction while learning new things. And for A motivation is, 
honestly, I don't know. I feel like I'm wasting my time in school. Um, so first, a uh, little overview of the, the average motivation. Uh, so as you can see that students overall were slightly more intri extrinsically motivated than intrinsically motivated, and there were relatively low scores for A motivations, uh, which is a good thing. That means that the students have like a purpose for being in college, uh, so that's good. Um, next, we look at the correlations between uh, motivation and GPA. Uh, so you can see there are, these were all significant correlations, and there are positive correlations actually between extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Uh, as well as negative correlations between A motivation. Um, now, as you probably can tell from my name and my accent that I'm not an American student, I'm actually from Norway. And so, being an international student, I thought it would be interesting to look at how, how international students and American students, if their motivation is different. And so first, here's an here's a overview of the memes of the American students. So the American students beautifully represented with the American flag. <laughs> And uh, international students with uh, green. <laughs> uh, so you can see that overall, uh, on average, Amer uh, international students are more, uh, more, slightly more extrinsically motivated and significantly more intrinsically motivated than the American students. Um, and now, the next one is where it gets interesting because you remember that there were some very similar correlations between uh, for a extrinsic and extrins intrinsic overall, but look what happens when we uh, when I separate the American students and the international students. See, there's a very big difference here. You can see there's a strong, uh, significant in intrinsic um, correlation between intrinsic motivation and academic performance in international students, uh, and a pretty strong uh, correlation between extrinsic motivation and academic performance in international students. Um, but when you see for the only significant predictor for, um, for academic performance in American students is their A motivations, which means that, um, that the best predictor for academic performance in American students is based on their lack of motivation rather than their motivation, which is very interesting. Now, can you see the sample sizes are quite uneven, so should be careful not making too many conclusions from this, but it's definitely, definitely interesting numbers and an interesting correlation, and I would love to see this on a more evenly um, numbered sample sizes. Um, so overall, there were positive correlation between e extrinsic uh, motivation and GPA, which was opposite of what I hypothesized on the overall students. There were also positive correlation between intrinsic motivation and GPA and negative correlation between A motivation and GPA. Um, for limitations, uh, I think that I, I, I wish that I had a better or a more normally distributed um, uh, measure of academic performance. As GPA, um, as you can see, majority was was um, the mean was 3.3, so majority was above 3.0 uh, GPA. Uh, so if there was a better, no, more normally distributed academic performance measurement, that would be, I think that would be helpful uh, for future research. Research, I'd love to see. I love to do this uh, research at a larger university with a bigger population size. Um, it would also be very interesting to look how uh, the, the, research, the results would be at a different geographic location in the country as well as in the world. So seeing if there are different cultures can influence uh, how students are motivated. Uh, this is my references. And lastly, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. American students, less. So in my sample, there were 103 American students and 17 international students responding to my uh, survey. Now, overall, the population, I don't know the numbers exactly, but there are definitely more American students at Martin College. Yes, sir. Um, for all the students, you know, you being an international student, um, I'm curious to know if there's possible, like you mentioned, cultural kind of differences in motivation and how one is socialized to be motivated from your personal experience. You know, being being from Norway. When you Um, I think that there are 
obviously some cultural differences in America. I think individual individualism is a big thing in America, and how um, the best are rewarded in Norway is more like the worst students are helped to to be are helped more than the best students are celebrated. If that makes sense. Now I think that uh, that the the students studying in America. They might have like a, a stronger intrinsic motivation because they have to do a lot more in order to get to college in America, and that's that might be why the results are like this. While if you're an American student, it's kind of expected that you go to college. While if you come from across the world, you have to go through a lot of uh, a lot of I know it's a, a lot of uh, um, bureaucracy, a lot of papers, a lot of a lot of pro process to to get admi admitted to American college. Yeah, absolutely. That could be could be definitely, uh, definitely, definitely a, a factor relating to that. So it could, could be definitely interesting to look at for future research. Thank you for that. I'm not sure if this, because of my study, I asked if you are American or if you are international more. Uh, as I knew that there was going to be a quite small sample size because there was only 17 international respondents, so there might be only one or two from each country. So I think at a larger scale, it would be definitely interesting to see if different countries have different motivation. But for uh, Barton College, only about a thousand students. Uh, I think that, that if it was to group it like that, it would be too small, too few people in each group, if that makes sense. But definitely very interesting on a larger scale. Yeah, definitely. Sure, sure. Appreciate that. That's all the questions we have time for today. Thank you very much.